All right, people, if you're coming from my Daryl Brooks video, welcome back. How y'all doing? Two in one day. We're not we're not playing out here. We're not messing around. You know, what I mean, we're, we're getting back on that schedule. But anyways, we're back with the um, with the Crumbly case. This is Jennifer Crumbly. I call her Jessica, Jennifer, all that shit. But she's that like she's that non what's the word shit. She's that forgettable that you really just be forgetting her name. The only thing that's really crazy about her and this case is that her son, Boxford, you know, that's that's the that's the peak of her existence. You have a teacher who was called to the stand. Um, pretty much, they'll, she, she's basically going to give us an inside view of what was really going on with the kid. Because right now, Jessica, what's her name? Fuck. Jennifer. <laughs> Because right now, Jennifer is saying, like, oh, yeah, we had a great relationship. I was a helicopter mom. I did nothing wrong. It, it, it's crazy that he shot up the school. Like, I would, I wish he shot us instead. You guys remember that? The whole... Anyway, she's going to tell us the other side of the story. Hopefully, it's good. Let's check it out. What your profession is? I'm an educator. Where is it? Are you a teacher? I am a teacher. Okay. Um, and who is your employer? Oxford Schools. Okay. How long have you been in? Man, he put a stain on the Oxford Schools, man. Shit. They asked me where I want my son to go to school. It ain't gonna be Oxford, bro. Shit. That that little he he finna go to public school. Shit. I feel like public school has a better chance of not getting shot up. But then again, you never know. You just never know. Nowadays, it's just a trend. Like, fuck it. Put it on TikTok. What you doing? Like, it's like a it's a it's a trend to the school. It's crazy. Uh, how long have you worked for Oxford schools? I started working for Oxford in the fall of '98. Okay, would that be your entire career? That is my entire career. Okay, and you stayed in that one school district. Correct. Okay. Um, Damn. Your current position is what? Um, I work for Oxford Virtual Academy. All right. And when did you begin that position? I began that position 18 months ago. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take you back. I know it's early and I'm pausing. It's literally 51 seconds. But I wonder why she went to Virtual Academy, you know, 18 months ago. Hmm. I wonder if Ethan Crumbly had anything to do with that. <laughs> Shit, that's PTSD right there. You want to keep working, but you're scared to go back to school. Virtual learning. <laughs> she a virtual teacher now. That's that's what he did to her. So I'm assuming. Back I don't know. to November 30th, 2021. Can you tell the jury what your position was at that time? At that time in Oxford, I was um, under teacher contract, but I was the ELA coach and um, the international baccalaureate coordinator. So I worked specifically with curriculum and teachers, um, like instructional moves in the classroom. Okay. So ELA, what's ELA? I'm sorry, thank you. It's English language arts. All right, thanks, thanks Josh. Uh, so how much contact did you have with students compared to teachers at that point? I would say minimal in comparison to teachers. All right, and you, you did though spend some time in the classroom in your career? Absolutely, yes. I spent the majority of my career in the classroom. Okay, um, so on that day, um, what was your typical day like around that time in that position? So in that position, I would work with um, building kind of professional development opportunities, or I was working with, you know, working with teachers individually. On that day in particular, I was working with the media specialist and my other coaching colleagues, my other instructional coaching colleagues, on building professional development for the next day. All right. Did you have a classroom? I had an office uh, that I shared with two other individuals. And it was like half a classroom, but it was in the educational um, hallway. So it was a classroom made into two offices. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, can you tell the jury when classes began that morning? What was the schedule of the day? It began and end, if you, if you remember. I was alone in the office. Um, and passing was still happening. So I moved to my, um, my desk space just to check some emails, check on a, you know, a couple of things. Okay. So your desk was in the back of the classroom? Yeah, it was towards the back side, yes. Facing the door? Facing the door, Okay, correct. Um, and 
Did you have a practice of what you did during passing time? So sometimes I would go out in the hall um, and check, like just to check and see what was going on, or I might chat with a teacher or two. I didn't on that day because it was towards the end of passing time, and so I knew things would be wrapping up and teachers would be heading back to their classes. Okay. Uh, so at some point, did you see or hear anything unusual? Yeah, so... <laughs> I love when they um, ask you the open-ended question. In the hallway. They're like, at some point, did you see or hear anything unusual? Like, you know, we're, never mind we're talking about this kid who shot up everybody, but did you, I don't know, did you hear or see anything unusual? Like, describe that to me. <laughs> you you got to love it. <laughs> the questions, yo. And I look, you know, looked up from my, from my laptop, and I see a bunch of kids running through the hallway, it was a pack of kids. Um, and they were moving pretty quickly and there was a commotion around it. Um, hmm. I couldn't tell if it was like excited, you know, that, that it was like higher pitched though. And it was almost like some of the kids' hands were extended, like they were trying to move really quickly. Okay, for the record, you have your hands, both your hands yep. up, shoulder. Um, that would be okay. me right there, and shit. Get the fuck out of my way. They got kids shooting back there. Shit. And it's crumbly. Trust me, everybody in the school, not everybody in the school, but everybody in that grade probably kind of knew of crumbly. But maybe not his friend or anything, but they're just like, oh, that kid. You know that kid. Cool. He exists. You know, trust me, because when I was going through high school, I had that same thought. I'm like, oh, yeah, that one right there. Keep an eye on that one, because that one might be the one. Shit. So they already knew the drill. It's get the fuck out of here. Unusual to you. It did. Okay. Did it seem unusual because of it, it was at the end of passing time or just because of the movement and the sound? It was the movement. It was the sound. It was the large bulk of kids that okay. were moving. Um, what did you do? Um, here come the tears. I exited my office. Yep, told you. I believe that there was... Possibly a fight. Um, and I'm not, I'm so, not, I'm not swearing there for the tears. I was just saying, I expected, you know, what I mean, I expected that. It's always the teachers that, um, that do that. But again, you know, if you're a teacher and you actually wanted to be a teacher, that means you're a nurturer. So you know, it's probably really hard for. But I'm just noticing that trend amongst teachers. Whenever there's something that happens, the teacher always breaks down, like like clockwork. So I, I run out of my office. I'm about midway through where 222 is. Um, and I see all those kids exiting out of door four. So I know there's not a fight. Hmm. So if you look at the map, you come out of your classroom and you look down the hallway and they're all running out of the school? Yeah, out of door four. Okay. And that was unusual? Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yes, I had never seen that before. All right. Um, and, and then what happened? Um, I paused for a second because I'm thinking, like, well, what, what is, what's going on, right? I don't know what's happening. Um, I head back into my, my office space. The hallway is completely clear. Um, and I walk into my office and I'm like, all right, what, what could possibly be happening in this moment? Was, was it unusual for the hallway to be completely clear? Um, the, I don't believe the bell had rung yet, so that was unusual. Okay. And so what did you do? Um, it was, um, in pausing, um, trying to, like, gather what to do next, I heard three things pretty quickly together, like, so quickly together that I have a hard time distinguishing what ha came first and what came last. Mm, what the hell? Um, but there were the sounds of, like, three like loud pops um that i could have mistaken oh for she is shaking she got traumatized that's crazy i mean damn shout out to her i hope she's all right but um it, it, it's kind of um it's kind of worth it to know how guns sound you know what i mean all the californians out here and they're they're like oh yeah stop the guns and the this and that guess what the bad guys are always gonna have the guns always forever until the end of time they're gonna have the guns or whatever They'll have the, the laser rays and all that shit. So, I mean, it's worth it to understand and maybe get yourself one. You know what I mean? Like, because 
Think about her. She's like, I heard three loud sounds, and she had no idea those were nine millimeter gunshots. Like somebody else who recognized that noise would have been out of there. You think I, man? I hear, I'm gone. I'm in the parking lot. What are you talking about? I'm already driving home trying to figure out what happened. Like I'm calling the other teacher. Like, yo, did you hear? The Shit. Lockers closing. If we were using lockers. So when you heard the loud, the three pops, what did you think it, that sound was? I, well, again, there was, there was that, there was, um, doors started slamming. I could hear like, boom, 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 boom. Oh, shit. And, um, and then, uh, the principal at the time, Steve Wolf, came over the PA and said, um, we're heading into lockdown. This is not a, this is not a drill. And how long had you known Steve? Uh, so a couple years at that point in time. Okay. Did his voice sound panicked? Um, his voice sounded, it was like um, urgent, but you could tell he was like tempering any, um, you know, like panic. So was that before the, the loud pops or after, if you can remember? Honestly, I, I, I cannot remember. Okay. When you heard this, was your door open or closed? My door when I came back in, um, I pulled it, but it didn't shut, so it was open um, a couple inches. Okay, so what did you do? Um, at that point in time, I moved to shut my door. Okay. Um, did you, after the pop, did you smell anything? No. Did you see anything? No. All right. And then you t tell the jury what happened when you turned around and headed to the door. So um, I walked to the door. I immediately pull it shut. Um, to the left of my door, so my door was here, and there was a glass part, like, you know, floor-to-ceiling glass, and then right here was uh, a night lock system. Can you tell the jury what a night lock system is? So a night lock is a simple gadget that goes into the door that goes into the floor, so that if the door were unlocked, it's like a second security measure. Um, if the door was not locked, or even if it was, um, someone can't get in. So if the glass is shut out, they, even if they're trying to undo the door, they can't open the door. And when did you learn about night locks? Um, maybe four years prior. Okay. Did you do that? Well, why did you install the night lock? Um, For that case? Well, one, I was directed that we're in lockdown, okay. right? So as soon as I knew that we're in, we're in lockdown, that's what you do. Okay. Um, did you, were you able to install the night lock? So I grabbed the night lock, you know, I undid the, the, the piece, grabbed it, um, and looked down at it. So I also, um, some of the doors have different installs, that whether the door goes, you know, in or out from the room. And so I looked at it to see. Just, hey, y'all let me know, she, I don't know, I don't know about the U.S. school system and shit. When were night locks brought up? I bet you was recently. They're like, yeah, we're going to put night locks in all the school classrooms because that makes everybody feel safe. You know, put the night locks. I bet you it's for exact times like this. You you close the window so all the doors get locked. That's crazy. But also really good, though, because, you know, anything bad happens, you could just kind of lock your class down. Damn. Just to remind myself which one. Um, because the other office that I have at the middle school or had at the middle school at the time had at, a different at this point, time. Molly, the door is shut or closed? The door is shut. Are you facing the door or facing the I'm way? facing the door, okay. so I'm, but I'm close enough to that wall because I had just grabbed it. Do you know about what the distance was between you and, and that door? Um, not even a foot. Okay. And then what happened? Um, I look at it, and out of my peripheral vision, I can see some sort of movement. Um, and so I look up, um, and I see someone dressed in dark, oversized clothing. And you're looking through that glass pane next to your door. Okay. And it was Ethan's scrawny ass. It's always man shit. It's never the high school jock or the prom president. I mean, shit, prom president, the prom king, or, or it's always that guy, bro. You know. And it's like, damn, dog, you couldn't do something else. You 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 really couldn't like go play some video games or some shit. Like you could have did anything else, but nah. You decided to take out your emotions on the school. Okay.
And I can see if people, like, if you had bullies, right, and you just stabbed them up one day, and, you know, that was that. Um, but it didn't even seem like anybody fucked with him. He had a friend. He went to, what was it, wrestling or some shit with his friend? Maybe he wasn't the most popular at school, but nobody was giving them wedgies and shit. You know, nobody was beating them up and putting his head in the toilet. So, like, what's what's the deal, bro? Uh, they have the mask on, uh, a hat, glasses, and a hood. Um, and I lock eyes with them. Had you ever seen that person before? I had not, no. Did you know if it was a student or... No. I have. I did not know if it was a student. All right. And you said you locked eyes. I locked eyes. Um, and then instantly I noticed. I see some some movement. And so I looked down and um, I realized he's raising a gun to me. Yeah, the cuete on him. Okay. Can you describe? Yeah. The um, gun? the gun was it was black, and I remember thinking. Uh, he's raising the gun to me, that there was no orange tip. Um, I had heard prior that BB guns have an orange tip. When you say he was raising the gun, can you explain what that what that looks like? Um, was it was it one arm or two arms? Well, I just saw the one starting to move up. I saw the gun, and I moved. Hell yeah! Which way did you move? I moved away from the, from the glass partition, away from the from the door, toward back into the room. Okay, you just described. You saw something in your peripheral vision. You looked up. Um, you locked eyes. I locked eyes. He didn't hesitate. Okay. About how long was that from the time you saw the peripheral vision, and then the gun was raised? A second. Damn. Okay. If that, when you locked eyes with this individual, what did you see? I'm sorry, can you repeat that question? Describe that for me. Um, I lock eyes with him, and I instantly see that movement. And I jumped to the side. Okay. She thought he was going to come shoot the school up with a BB gun. She was like, I didn't see any orange tip. I, I heard that BB guns have orange tips. This is a woman speaking who has never held a, a gun in her life. You know what I mean? Like, not, not acceptable, people. If you don't live in a city where it's in, impossible to get a gun, then you should, you should, I mean, you know. Don't be like this chick. She's fine. She's cool. But don't be like her. Because in a situation where she didn't have the night locks or any of that good stuff, she would have been fucked. Over with. Funeral. What happened after you jumped to the side? Um, as I jump, I can... And was the night... Did you ever get the night lock installed at that The point? night lock is not installed at Oh, she... Okay. Oh, no. What the fuck? So when I move... Um, I kind of jump and turn my body this way at the same time. Okay, and you're, for the record, you're motioning, turning your yeah. shoulders to the right. To the right. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel uh, like my my left shoulder moves back a bit, and I feel a burn like hot water. Oh, she got hit. Me. Where did you feel that? Um, in my um, arm. Which arm? In my left arm. She got okay. blasted. I'm pointing to your, your yeah. right below your shoulder. Yep. And are you, are you standing up? Are you sitting down? Are you? I'm standing up at this point in time. Um, I feel that hot, that hot burn go through my arm. Um, and I turn back. There was a window in the back of my room that leads out to the courtyard. And I see a bullet hole. Okay, I'm going to um, show you on the screen. It's been marked as um, people's proposed exhibit. Man, he um, hit her. That's that's why that. she's crying. That's some traumatic ass shit. I thought she just, you know, saw it, saw some kids run by. She got hit. That's crazy. Let's see this classroom. That, uh, that's the office that I shared. Okay, and that 
Can you just describe where the desk is, where what, what you just described, and point that out? You said yep. you turned around um, to the back of the classroom. Yep. So you can see on that window exiting, there's a white yep. mark. I'm a, I'll, oh, right I was here. just about to get an arrow and pop it out for y'all. But yep, right there. Hit her, hit the window. Man. Yeah, so I feel like that whole, oh, I need help. I'm about to do it. I'm just going to... I'm going to end it all. I'm going to spend my life in prison. All that's just him trying to make like a reason for doing this. I feel like he just wanted to do it. He was like, fuck it. Let's try this Grand Theft Auto mode. You know, I got a gun. Let me see what happens when I shoot somebody with it. That's the type of time I feel like he was on. Yep. That would be the bullet hole. Did you, is, is that what you, uh... you guys let me know though, because some of you guys, it, it's a, it's a mixed barrel. Like some of y'all in the comments are like, nah, he was screaming for help. He was so depressed and I mean, I mean, bro, you have both your parents and I mean, sure, it might be kind of fucked up right now, but like, I just don't think he was depressed, you know what I mean? But I could be wrong. Noticed when you turned around? That is what I noticed when I turned around, correct. Okay. At this point, what were you thinking? A BB gun can't do that. No shit, ma'am. I... It seems like really silly. What seems silly? That I couldn't wrap my head around what was happening. I mean, after you felt the, the warm and you still were thinking it might be a BB gun. Yeah. Okay. So what did you do? Was um, the night lock installed at this point? The night lock's not installed at this point, and, and the only thing I'm thinking is I have to barricade this door. Like, there was instinct that kicked in. Um, so what you can't see is right around that corner, there was this huge filing cabinet. And I think we can point so to the, around that corner to the Yeah. Door. Okay. And um, so I grab it because I'm afraid to go back towards the door at this point in time. And I try to move it thinking maybe I can pull it out enough and push it. And it was just too heavy for me. So that rolling cart was sitting next to it. Um, that's when I pulled out the rolling cart and I no, sorry, I take that back. It's I didn't okay, do that yet. I crawled down on my hands and knees and I put that night lock in. Um, and then I moved for the roll. I was like, I just have to keep barricading. I just have to keep barricading. And so I grabbed the rolling cart. Is the object in the Yeah, you can picture? see it's a little red object. On the rolling cart. Yeah. Oh. Man, she locked herself in. Good for her, though, because I, she's like, I just need to barricade. I just need to barricade. No. Let me tell you what saved her her life. The night lock. Them barricades weren't going to do much. With him, shit. He was about to shoot that little door lock open, and you're about to be fucked. I think the night lock saved her, guys. What do you guys think? I think, I think, I think the night locks had her back. That's my, that's my synopsis of this. Uh, I knew I was bleeding. Um, I removed my cardigan and I used one of the sleeves of the arm, uh, wrapped there it you up go. on top and pulled with one arm and my, my teeth with the other. There she uh, go. You don't need no tourniquet when you got a cardigan on. Stop my, playing. Um, how many inches down was that wound? Um, it sits right here. Okay. And you brought a card in so that you could Remove. show the jury what that yeah. was like so they know exactly where you were headed. Yeah. Go ahead. Ooh, we get to see the bullet wound. I don't know if you can all see okay, but... You can step down if you... Okay. Can everyone see? Mm -hmm. can see? I don't see um, shit. So you can see it kind of sits in the back. So when I was turned, that there's was the entrance and the exit. And there's two holes there. Yep, so it entered here. And exited here, um, and the space in between. Uh, oh wow, she actually got a flesh wound. She's lucky, because I thought with a broke her arm or something. She got the fleshiest of flesh wounds. That's crazy. I thought she got hit crazy. She she got hit in her skin. I don't think it broke a bone or did anything. She was like, oh, I need a tourniquet. I mean, granted, you can still bleed out over small things like that, but I don't even think she like. I'm not. I'm not even downplaying her situation, but I'm. I'm not thinking she would bleed out from a flesh wound like that. But um. Uh, the, the heat of the bullet cauterized. Um, 
the skin the skin. Okay. Yeah, see the heat of the bullet cauterized the skin. See, man, see, I, I, I promise you I'm not watching this shit ahead of time. Is she not going to bleed out with that? She was over there like, oh, my God, I'm going to die. And that shit is over there chilling. In and out. That's the best way you could have gotten hit. In and out. Like, if you get hit and, and it breaks a bone, and then the vein inside gets, like, not the vein, I think it's the artery. Because you know how arteries go in and out your bones and shit? Like, if you break your bone and it, like, ruptures an artery, that's how I feel like most people bleed out. She was lucky. She just got the flesh. Yeah. Um, you put the tourniquet where on your shoulder? I put it above the wound. Okay. How'd you know how to do that? Um, we go through trainings, um... Once a year regarding um, what to do okay. in the situation. But anyways, people, that was pretty much the Oxford teacher, yo. Like, she went through some shit. She got shot. She she has to do e-learning now. I don't care what y'all say. I didn't look it up, but I know she's e-learning or e-teaching or whatever you call it because of that incident. She Every time she sees a classroom, she sees it as a death trap. <laughs> that's what I'm that's what I'm pretty sure of but you guys let me know if I'm talking shit well anyways y'all I love you guys man this has been another crumbly episode we're gonna go through the rest of it I, I've been seeing the comments I know you guys are interested so hell yeah tell your friends your auntie your nephews all that shit subscribe to the channel love y'all my patreon folks for dropping another video by the end of this week so keep an eye out for that and uh, yeah, you know, people stay inside, stay safe. I'm fucking out of here.